Hey, it's Dr. Mike T. Nelson here, and I've got a great video from Dr. Kenneth J. giving you all the details on how to do rowing, uh, specifically indoor rowing in this case. Uh, this was filmed live at the Kerrig Institute uh, Human Performance Program, uh, Module 2 on Cardiovascular. This is part of a four-module program that has strength and conditioning, cardiovascular for Module 2, uh, nutrition for Module 3, there's truly really here, and also Module 4, which is the neurointegration of everything. Uh, so check out these slides here in video if you want to learn how to improve your technique on rowing. The shins are vertical. That's number one important thing to remember, that every time you come forward and get ready to do a pull, you start at vertical shins, okay? If you go further forward, if you have the ankle flexibility to come forward more, you're gonna compress more, meaning that you're gonna increase the, decrease the ankle in, or decrease the, uh, the angle in the knee joint, which can put unnecessary pressure uh, in your knee. Uh, that may or may not be a problem, but the problem will then manifest itself up in the torso because the more you compress this way the more your tendency is going to be to round uh, your upper back and when you round your upper back in the catch position of the rowing there's not going to be any room for respiration because your lungs needs space so they can expand and if you're completely compressed you cannot take enough air in and then you, uh, it's only a matter of a couple of strokes, then you'll be out of breath, all right? So what happens with your shin angle, if that's off, you are, it's gonna manifest itself all the way up into your posture here, that's gonna affect your breathing, and eventually over the long run, it's probably also gonna, gonna cause discomfort in the lower back, because you're gonna be doing this with your pelvis, and then you're gonna be sitting on it loaded for an extended period of time. So that's going to do uh, put some unnecessary stress on your low back. So number one thing to pay attention to when you're on the rower is when you're coming forward, vertical shins. That's as, as far as you go forward. You can reach further forward as long as you try to keep your torso straight and you lean from the hips. Okay? In this position, arms are also straight. That is tremendously important because if they're not straight, when you then initiate the pull to go backwards, then you will most likely start to pull with your arms. And your arms are not as powerful as your legs or glutes are. Maybe your straight. I don't know. <laughs> but, but, but he's an outlier. <laughs> so make sure your elbows are locked and that you can initiate with driving with your legs meaning that you're gonna be pushing into the foot plates of the rowing machine. Then you're gonna initiate uh, the push. The knee angle is gonna start to open. In the second phase, let's see where's my pointer here. There we go. The knees are gonna start to open slightly. And look at the torso angle here. It really hasn't changed, but we gotta initiate with the legs first primarily the quadriceps muscle, the knee extensors are the primary driver. Here, we're about to what, 90 to 100 degrees open in the knees, and only then the torso are, is beginning to slightly move backwards. We're definitely not leaning back yet, not at all. It's really, really important to emphasize that. The arms hasn't begun to pull either. It's still all legs. Now, at this point right here, when the legs are fully extended or almost fully extended, then there's a swing phase. And the swing phase is when the torso goes from basically uh, leaning slightly forward or close to vertical into leaning backwards. That's the swing phase. There's a torso swing involved, right? So you actually use that torso swing. If you do it with a, a neutral back, it's actually, um, it's, it's hip extension because the hip is opening up. So you're driving 
that way, basically like finishing out a deadlift, okay? And then at the same time, the arms will initiate, where is this? Here. Um, the arms will initiate the pull in the swing phase and it will finish the pull phase with the arms and the elbows going back, okay? This is uh, somewhat old, uh, or this picture series is somewhat old because what you'll see in, um, in uh, rowers, professional rowers now, is that they'll lean back way more than this, right? So it used to be, uh, like in the 1920s, 1930s, they would have a 15 degree lean forward and back. And the lean back has, over the years, it has progressed so it went to 30 degrees, and then now we're at 45 degrees, and some are even leaning as far back as 60 degrees from vertical, all right? And they do that, of course, in order to increase stroke length. And the interesting thing is that you would think that by increasing the stroke length, then you're not gonna be uh, as fast as you are in terms of your stroke rate. But what we're seeing in, um, in the best rowers in the world, even if they're leaning back to 45 or 60 degrees, they're not uh, slowing down their stroke rate. So they're still at that 32, 34, 36 strokes per minute on average in a 2K race. And that of course, same stroke rate, but high, uh, higher stroke rate translates into greater speeds. And greater speeds are higher power outputs. So, it used to be that your torso would go between uh, 1 o'clock and 11 o'clock, back and forth. That would be the torso swing of it. But now we're at the point, if we're leaning forward towards 1 o'clock, then we're leaning back towards 10 o'clock instead of 11 o'clock. That makes sense? Yeah. Now, you will see some uh, that goes excessively far back, so way beyond six, uh, 60 degrees. And they're almost lying flat down and really in order, and they're pulling to their face. Um, number one, if you go to the Crash Bees indoor rowing competitions, someone is definitely gonna laugh at you if you do that. <laughs> um, but there's absolutely no point in overdoing it just to get, because you're gonna be compromising speed uh, on the recovery and you're going to be compromising your stroke uh, rates per minute if you do that. So it's about finding that sweet spot that fits you individually. And whether or not you're leaning back 20 degrees, 40 degrees or 60 degrees really doesn't matter as long as you get some lean in there. And as you get more experience with rowing, you will figure out how to increase that stroke length as your, uh, as your confidence with being on the rower increases as well. Now, the, one of the greatest mistakes that I see uh, where the shins go past vertical on the forward motion is that people stay, stay in the position where, they have, uh, where they're leaning back, even though they're moving forward, right? So they're sitting on the row, they're moving forward, but they're leaning back. That is something that's, gonna, that, that's just going to take a whole lot out of your efficiency and your power and your time on whatever distance that you're doing is going to drop way down. So it's so important that you get this swinging motion of the torso as well. And then we get to the recovery phase. And that is another uh, equally important part of being on the rower. Because what I see, and I'll demonstrate this when we go over to the rower, but what I'll see is that when people recover and they have to return to this catch position right here, what they'll do from here is that they'll start by bending the knees, right? But if you start by bending the knees and the handle is up here and you bend the knees, then as you move forward, you come into problems because then you have to move the handle of the rowing machine over the knees. So it begins, it begins to look like a motion where you're moving forward and then you have to go over the knees and then move forward. It looks really weird, but a lot of people do it who hasn't been taught how to row, right? So there's a timing element, which means that as you move, as much as it's legs, 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 hips and arms on the way back, as you go forward and into the recovery again, it's arms first, then torso, 
and legs at the very end of it. Right? So the sequence of legs, torso, arms as you pull, and arms, torso, legs as you recover. If you can re remember that sequence, then you're good. And then there are all the finer points, but that will definitely get you started um, safely and as efficiently as possible.